Busy roads in Fayetteville still close after a gas leak that's also evacuated some local businesses. We're live on the scene with how much longer these repairs could take. This messy system is triggering a WRAL weather alert date for your weekend. I'm timing out the cold, wet weather and tracking any possibility of freezing rain. Then WRAL goes in depth on the new push from Panthers fans to push out the owner, David Tepper, caught on camera throwing a drink on a fan. Right now at 7, breaking news, a gas leak is forcing evacuations in Fayetteville after crews hit a line. Sky 5 flew over the scene at Bragg Boulevard and Bargain Street, still very active at this hour. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Rowe. And I'm Dan Haggerty. This is a big mess. They're working, of course, to repair this leak and then reopen the closed roads and businesses in that area. Mm -hmm. WRL's Willie Danley is live at the scene. Willie, any progress on a fix? Ashley, as of now, all six lanes of traffic here on Bragg Boulevard are closed as they're making the repairs. You can see the crews far down the road behind me. Take a look at this video that Sky 5 captured, and you can see how big this area is that's currently being impacted. As of right now, they're only letting through local traffic for an apartment complex that lives here. All of these businesses in this area have been closed. I heard one business owner say that they had to close because the customers weren't able to come through the area. I'm still waiting to hear back from the Fayetteville Fire Department as well as the gas company on how long people can expect this road to be closed. We're going to continue to follow up on this and keep you updated with what we know. Back okay, to you. Willie, thank you very much. All right, let's take a look. Hi, let's take a look at the system heading our way, bringing a, a bit of cold rain into our area this weekend. Storms are possible. We can't rule out freezing rain in our northern counties. Meteorologist Kat Campbell is standing by in the Severe Weather Center. Kat, uh, we will see some temperatures in the mid-20s overnight. It's going to be a cold one. It is. It's going to be freezing cold tonight for everyone with low temperatures falling into the low to mid-20s. But this cold air mass is going to be moving away as the moisture moves in. So we're not expecting to see any winter weather here in the Triangle. It would be up toward Person County, Mecklenburg County, and perhaps the northern tier of Granville County that we could see a brief period on Saturday morning with freezing temperatures between about 5 a.m and 8 or 9 a.m. But after 9 a.m., everywhere is likely to be above freezing. We're not expecting any freezing rain accrual and not expecting any big travel impacts. It's really just going to be a cold, rainy day for us in most of central North Carolina. Temperatures by noon, 36 in Roxborough with the rain low to mid 40s here in the Triangle. But certainly an active weather day with more winter weather in the western part of North Carolina and perhaps some thunderstorms in eastern North Carolina. As Wellington should be in the low to mid 60s perhaps. We'll see the rain continue into Saturday afternoon, but it does begin to move out as we look ahead to Saturday evening. So the freezing rain, it's a very limited area that we could see it before 9 a.m. Not expecting that to be a big deal, but we've got another system that brings even more rain. I'll have more on that coming up. Check back in. Thank you, Kat. Dan, right now in the live center, we're monitoring that alert that went out to cell phones a short time ago from Duke Energy. You may have received it. This is what it looked like. And it talked about uh, between 6 and 9 a.m. asking consumers, customers to minimize power tomorrow morning. You might be thinking, well, what in the world is that all about? We wanted to know as well. Reached out to Duke. And this is what the spokesperson had to say. Before he even listened to this phone interview, though, he says there is no immediate or imminent concern with the grid tomorrow morning. Take a listen. The point of it is to um, make customers aware that, that we are going to see higher demand and, um, you know, that we have, uh, we're taking steps to uh, protect the grid, make it reliable. And this is an opportunity for customers to be aware that that is the time of day when we tend to see our highest usage. And if there's things they can do to help, uh, we appreciate it. So again, between 6 and 9 a.m., they're asking you to not crank the temperature way up to make it real warm in your house. If that's something you can help them with, I asked point blank if they're concerned about blackouts tomorrow. The answer, no. Back to you. All right, Mark, thanks. A woman has serious injuries after a crash in Cary. Right now, 1010 Road at Plumtree Way is still closed as police investigate. This is a live look at that scene, which has been active since about 4.30 this afternoon. Police say the woman turned into the path of a pickup truck. We are asking for more information from officers. We will bring you updates as we learn more. In the last 30 minutes, we learned a third person faces charges in connection with a shooting inside Goldsboro's Berkeley Mall. No one was hit by gunfire, but the people who were there say they heard as many as 10 shots fired. WRL's Chelsea Donovan talked with people who were inside.
that package to you. All right, we're going to get that package to you momentarily. Uh, shall we be heading over to Mark again in the Live Center? Yeah, we can take it, Ashley. We are following a brand new update, actually, on that story. That happened at the Berkeley Mall there in Goldsboro. Three people have been identified as the suspects, and they're all facing attempted murder charges right now. If we can pull up the screen, these are the brand new names just in here at 7 o'clock. Jalil McDuffie, Damaj Oates, and Taiwan Bennett. They're all in custody. They're all facing those charges, as I mentioned, of attempted murder, in addition to other charges uh, there this evening. Investigators say at the time when this uh, when the shots rang out, there was a big rush to get people out of the mall. There was a big concern. They were uh, initially going for an active shooter. That's what the, one of those initial calls was all about. We'll get that package back to you from uh, our crew there on the ground as soon as we have that ready. But that is the big update there. Those names, the suspects identified. Back to you. Mark, thank you so much. This soldier from Pinehurst who was severely injured from a drone strike in Iraq will soon be headed back here to the U.S. on U.S. soil for treatment. WRL's Gerald Owens joins us now with the latest. Gerald, do we know how he's doing tonight? Yeah, Dan, a close friend of Chief Warrant Officer 4 Garrett Illerbrun told WRL he's still unconscious and in a coma, but he's moved his arm. Illerbrun has been in a hospital in Germany since he was injured in a drone attack at Erbil Air Base in northern Iraq Christmas Day. His wife is there with him while their son Tucker is getting a lot of support back home. A spokesperson from the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Liberty says he is expected to be sent to Walter Reed National Medical Center in Maryland to continue his recovery. And that could be as soon as tomorrow. Meanwhile, the U.S. military carried out a retaliatory strike in Baghdad in response to recent attacks on U.S. service members. The strike killed a militia leader believed to be behind the attacks. It was aimed at a facility used by an Iraqi militia group aligned with Iran. According to news reports, the U.S. military has come under attack at least 100 times in Iraq and Syria since the Israel-Hamas war began in October. This past summer, the 82nd Airborne announced that they would be deploying 1,500 troops to the Middle East. Dan? Our thoughts are with that family. and It's got to be so tough for them tonight, Gerald. Thank you. Raleigh is getting ready to build a new 17-story city hall with a price tag of $206 million. Sky 5 flew over the area across from Nash Square. Crews are working to demolish the old Raleigh Police Department headquarters at McDowell and West Hargett Streets. It's been vacant since 2010. The new East Civic Tower will rise up on this corner. The building will have updated technology, security improvements, and a bigger city council chambers. It'll consolidate city offices under one roof. Right now, they're spread out across five buildings downtown, costing the city about $62,000 a month in rent. The original plans showed a 20-story building that was reduced to 17 due to rising construction costs. The city hopes to have the East Civic Tower finished by December of 2026. David Tepper's $300,000 drink last Sunday is the latest example of a hard truth about the NFL. It's not about you. After the break, we go in-depth about franchise owners and the power even the loudest fans don't have. Plus, with all the rain about to pour over our area, crews are working hard to prevent one lake from pouring over. Welcome back right now to the Live Center 7-Eleven. Our team has been talking about that winter weather that's moving the direction of the East Coast. Well, Delta Airlines already getting out ahead of it, along with other airlines and issuing waivers. This is the long list right here. Basically, all the states and cities above North Carolina, if you're flying through any of those over the next several days, could be impacted by the weather and all the storms that are moving this direction. Right now, much of that in Denver, Dallas, and Houston, it's going to continue to pick up strength, and storms are going to really uh, cause problems for D.C., New York, Boston. The Boston area is forecasted to see several inches of snow over the next several days. Again, if you're traveling, get out ahead of this. Talk to your airlines. They're going to work with you because they don't want you to get stuck in those airports and backlog the system. So just a heads up. We'll monitor the delays affected here at RDU. There likely will be some cancellations up north. Back to you. Yeah, good advice. Thanks, Mark. Let's send it over now to meteorologist Kat Campbell. Kat, we are talking about Saturday and all the rain we are going to get. 
Absolutely. And, you know, I walked into work on Monday and I knew it was just Monday, but I said, we got to talk about the weekend. That system is going to be a big one. And that's unfortunately what we're seeing play out in terms of the travel impacts. It's going to be a big weekend across the eastern U.S. for issues. For us, it comes in the form of rain. We're not going to see huge issues locally. If you're traveling west, you could see some issues, though. 50 for the high here Saturday, 57 with dry weather Sunday. So move those indoor, move those outdoor plans to Sunday. Move your indoor plans plans to Saturday if you're able to. Rain is likely morning through the afternoon and then once we get to the evening hours Saturday, we should begin to see the rain pushing out. We're not currently under any kind of winter weather watch warning advisory, but the mountains are right now and parts of the foothills hazardous travel expected on Saturday and that'll start very early Saturday morning in the mountains. They could see some snow totals up to about an inch and on top of that there could be up to a quarter of an inch of icicles. So it's going to be a mix even for much of the North Carolina mountains. Here's where the system is right now. It is producing some snow in parts of Texas and Colorado. It's going to come together and look a lot more impressive during the day tomorrow. And that's because as this system moves to the east, it's going to pick up all this moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. So you're really going to see it come together. It arrives here Saturday morning. We could see a brief period of freezing rain up in Person County, Mecklenburg County, Virginia. But we are not expecting this to be a big widespread issue for us or impact travel. Now, if you're traveling to the mountains, it could be a different story. It's just going to be a cold rain, but pretty much an all-day rain. So move your plants inside. It's not going to be nice out. So we get into Saturday night and Sunday. We'll continue to see this system produce some snow in the northeast and the New England states. And then after that, we've got to talk about Tuesday. Now, this system is going to approach the area Monday night. It doesn't get here until Tuesday, but this one's going to be of even greater impacts. We're talking one to three inches of rain, so heavy rain could lead to some localized flooding. Very strong winds next Tuesday as well. I know it's a ways out, but just a heads up, Tuesday is looking like a pretty rough weather day. And by the time we get to this time next week, we could have picked up two to four inches of rain in the western part of our area, two to three inches in the eastern part of our area. So we've got uh, quite a few systems coming our way, and they'll be impactful. And the long range models show one after another. This is what we expect to see during an El Nino winter. We certainly have wet weather, but it is helping with the drought. As we look ahead tomorrow, it's going to be a chilly but dry day. 49 the high. Saturday, we've got the chilly rain. Pretty nice on Sunday, partly cloudy, 57. One more dry day before Tuesday system gets here, and then a little quieter as we look toward the middle of next week. Ashley. Okay, Kat, thank you. The launch. We're actually going to take a quick break, if I can understand correctly. Oh, we're going over to Dan now. Dan, over to you. Hey, hi, everybody. Things are going great. Um, look, I want to talk for just a second uh, about something we want to go in depth on. Let's turn things around. Let's talk about being a billionaire. It, wouldn't that be nice? It's hard to really conceive how much money that actually is. Um, here's my favorite way to kind of wrap my head around it. If you were to count the seconds without stopping from, from one to one million, it would take about 11 days to get there. If you kept counting until you reached a billion, it would take you 31 years. Little difference there. Now, keep counting to 20 billion, and you will have reached the net worth of Carolina Panthers owner, David Tepper. So, when the NFL fined him $300,000 for throwing his drink at fans from his luxury box in Jacksonville, it would be the equivalent of fining you or me or the average person about a buck. Now, I know what you're thinking. A drink thrown at an NFL game? Unbelievable. Unheard of. Never seen such a thing. Either way, Tepper apologized. He wrote in a statement that said, in part, I regret my behavior and I should have let security handle any issue, so on and so forth, etc. He never really said the word sorry. Now, Twitter said the apology reminded them of this from the office. <clears throat> I state my regret. You couldn't have memorized that? I could not because I do not feel it. Okay. That's hilarious. The Internet remains undefeated, and some people hope to use that power on the Internet 
to oust Tepper from the team. This change.org petition has 3,000 signatures of fans who want Tepper to be fired by the league. They, they cite the team's horrible record, the bad personnel decisions, and the whole drink thing, to name a few. Now, if you're wondering, that petition is entirely frivolous. I mean, anyone can post something onto change.org. There's currently a, a petition with 25,000 signatures to sell Montana to Canada for uh, $1 trillion, but that's not really the main reason the petition has no teeth. It's mainly because the Carolina Panthers are not your team, it's his. You know, technically, if you read the NFL rules, all the other team owners could come together, they could decide to vote him out, but look, that's never going to happen. Actually, that, that nearly happened last year with Commander's owner, Dan Snyder, when he was charged with sexual harassment and misappropriating money, but he walked away before anything could go down. He sold the team. He made billions of dollars. If they weren't willing to draw that line there with him, do you really think they're going to draw it with drink throwing? They didn't draw that line with Patriots owner Robert Kraft when he was arrested for soliciting a prostitute at a Florida massage parlor, or when Raiders owner Mark Davis got this haircut. The list goes on. Look, when I lived in San Diego for a few years, Chargers fans couldn't stand the team owner. He kept asking the city to help fund a new stadium, but voters kept saying, no, buy it yourself. So he took his ball and his players and his coaches and his team, and he went to Los Angeles. Despite the Chargers being in San Diego for nearly six decades, it wasn't their team, it was his. Something that's true for every team in the league except one. The Green Bay Packers are a nonprofit. A Guardian article called Where Fans Rather Than a Billionaire Are the Owners lays it all out. The team is owned by over 500,000 individual fans, which is one reason why a city that's smaller than Cary still has an iconic NFL franchise. If you think this sounds like a good idea, too bad, or should I say, too late. In 1960, then NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle wrote into the league's constitution in a section known as the Green Bay Rule that future teams must be organized as, as for-profit entities. They want your money, they want a profit, and they're getting it. Look, you might not think that David Tepper is a good owner, but he's a heck of a businessman. Tepper bought the Panthers in 2018 for $2.275 billion. Today, it's worth $4.1 billion. And why the, the team might be at the bottom of the barrel, that barrel is on a rocket ship. If you looked at the 100 most watched broadcasts of 2022, out of the most watched 100, 82 of them were the NFL. Look, I get it. I was, I was raised a Steeler fan. I, mean, I was born a Steelers fan. The doctors wrapped me in a terrible towel when I was born. That's a true story. Fandom runs deep. It's about identity and connection. And when that's being threatened or mistreated, we get passionate. We can get frustrated. We can act out. Just don't throw anything. We know where that leads. Let me know what you think about this topic or, or any other about the segment. You just send me an email, dan at wrel.com. I love that the doctors wrapped you in a terrible towel. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Hey, the launch of mobile sports betting in our state is starting to take shape. What we're learning about next steps for making bets coming up. Right now at 723, just getting some brand new video in from Nightdale in Wake County. This is what it looks like as Wake County Sheriff's Department uh, out there investigating a shooting. This is off of Quiet Oaks Road near Nightdale. We're being told that the uh, Sheriff's Department arrived and they found one man suffering from a gunshot wound. He was taken to the hospital. Non-life-threatening injuries as of right now. His name has not been released. There's no known threat to the community. According to deputies, no one has been arrested either. So we'll keep you up to date on this developing story in Wake County. Okay, thanks, Mark. Crews are lowering levels at Lake Johnson as we track multiple systems bringing rain to our area the next few days. You've heard Kat talk about this. It's all in an effort to prevent potential flooding in the surrounding area. The city was able to bring levels down by about a foot today. The goal is to lower it another foot before rain and storms arrive this weekend. Levels can then be adjusted if necessary. Uh, officials have a similar strategy at Falls Lake and Jordan Lake. They started releasing water late last week. Jordan Lake is down about two feet. Falls Lake down about four inches.
Mobile sports betting will launch in North Carolina before in-person sports books at arenas or other venues. That's what the NC Lottery's head of sports betting decided this morning at a committee meeting. The commission has not announced a date for when bettors will be able to wager on sports on their mobile devices. Last week, seven mobile sports betting companies, those include industry leaders like FanDuel, DraftKings, Bet MGM and ESPN Bet applied for licenses to accept bets in North Carolina ahead of the initial December 27th deadline. The Carolina Hurricanes completed their purchase of the Backyard Bistro. The restaurant and bar sits just across the street from the PNC Arena and Carter Finley Stadium complex. PNC Arena is set to undergo a $300 million renovation in the coming years and significant development is expected around the arena as well. The first weekend of 2024 filled with family fun, including some famous voice actors in town. WRL's lifestyle editor Kathy Hanrahan has the details in this week's edition of Out and About. It's your final weekend to see the Illuminate Art Walk. This free self-guided tour in downtown Raleigh features large light installations like these giant talking heads. The lights are up through Friday night. The team behind GalaxyCon Fan Convention are bringing a new event to the Triangle this weekend. Animate Raleigh will be featuring animation, cosplay, anime, and lots of voice actors. The event will run Friday through Sunday at the Raleigh Convention Center. Tickets are available now. And on Saturday in Cary, grab your furry friend for a special race at Wake Med Soccer Park. The Mutts and Marshmallows 8K is happening, and everyone who finishes the race gets a hot chocolate. Proceeds from the event go to the SPCA of Wake County. These are just a few ways to get out and about this weekend. Kathy Hanrahan, WRAL News. A lot of fun to have. Uh, Saturday's going to be kind of a mess, but, you know, uh, well, we'll it should Well, it should be over, as Kat and Mike have been saying, yep. uh, by about 6 o'clock. So, yeah. after supper time, Enjoy. there you go. Thanks for making WRAL your choice for local news. We got our next newscast on Fox 50 at 10 o'clock, and we'll see you back here at 11 on WRAL. Have a great night. watching WRAL News over the Air Channel 34 and Spectrum Channel 1257.